My name, my name is Tomáš Mraz. I work in Red Hat in uh, the crypto team, uh, which focuses on uh, uh, encryption and uh, other cryptographic technologies on uh, the platform for, on the RHEL and Fedora. Uh, so uh, I will. What? Yeah. Okay. Uh, for the um, for the start, I will talk a little bit, a little bit about history. Uh, what perspectives uh, it gives us, uh, then I will uh, get to the point, uh, what is the crypto policies, why do we need it, uh, I will show you some demo of the, uh, of the functionality, and uh, I will talk about some details, and also what crypto policies isn't about, and uh, some future. Um, yeah, introduction of course already there. Uh, for the history, um, I won't go through all this uh, stuff that I put on the slides, but um, basically uh, uh, crypto, uh, cryptography was started uh, to be used very early in history, um, but uh, at that old times uh, these were mostly substitution ciphers and uh, stuff that can be very easily broken. It was broken like uh, in the first century, uh, first uh, uh, millennium after uh, AD. Um, the, there is one thing that's not yet deciphered, it's the Voynich manus manuscript, but uh, did, uh, the reason is that um, uh, the context uh, is unknown and uh, there is too little information about it and it might not be even a cipher. Um, one interesting thing is that uh, uh, at uh, 1917, uh, the Gil Gilbert Vernam invented the wine time pad, which is the only fully mathematically proven unbreakable cipher. But there is but, and that's the context. Uh, I, don't, I won't go into detail, but there are many ifs and, and so on. Again. This is modern cryptography. Um, for symmetric, we have DES. Uh, it started with DES. Uh, now we have AES. Uh, for the public key, public key cryptography, it was also invented in the 70s. Um, this is timeline <coughs> of, of uh, uh, secure protocols, or the major one, which is SSL and then later TLS. Uh, this, uh, this is when it was like uh, published. Uh, the standard was, standard was published and uh, this uh, is when it was deprecated. Uh, and this kind of line shows you when it was insecure. <coughs> so SSL, uh, ins insecure that we know that it is in insecure. So SSL v2, it was like this, uh, so since the beginning, but it was anyway deployed. Yeah, so um, yeah, it was insecure, but deployed uh, at this time. It really was not really that much deployed. Uh, yeah. For SSL v3, v3, we are a little bit worse because yeah, this this is like kind of uh, longer, but uh, we still have SSL v3 servers. It's not on public internet, uh, but it's not that that much anymore anyway. But for the others, you can see yes, this this is still complicated. <coughs> Situation. The only uh, secure protocols uh, which we can like, reasonably that are secure are TLS 1.2 and of course TLS 1.3. Uh, there are some ifs for TLS 1.2, but yeah, I won't go into the detail. So, what perspective this this gives us? Uh, the progress in design of uh, new ciphers goes hand in hand with progress in script analysis and uh, algorithms and protocols will be broken and replaced. That's a fact. Um, we need to get us accustomed with it. And of course, there is a huge pool of legacy things to, uh, that we need to communicate with. And um, that might not be that secure communication, but we need to communicate with them. We cannot like just say, no, we won't. Um, so what, what's, what's the crypto policies? It's a set of configuration files or configuration file snippets uh, that are centrally uh, managed on the system. Uh, they have uh, multiple pre-designed policy, policy levels which are maintained um, and they cover core crypto components of the system. 
there was a presentation on, uh, in the morning about what are the crypto components, but I will also talk about this. Um, they, uh, they are present, uh, the crypto policies are present on current federal releases, and they will be in relay, they, they are in relay beta. Um, why do we need it? This is basically coming from the, uh, from the perspectives. Uh, cryptography and secure protocols are widespread in the operating system and uh, multiple cryptographic libraries provide the implementation. So we have, um, and we have relatively, relatively fast changes. Uh, we need to like, adjust uh, relatively, relatively quickly, especially if um, on enterprise um, uh, products uh, which have long, long life cycle. And we have uh, multiple things to configure, so it would be very hard to like require the sysadmin to do all the all the stuff or reconfigure and, and so on. So, um, and we have leg legacy devices which use uh, insecure or partly insecure algorithms or protocols, and we need to communicate with them. Well, let's look at some demo, and hopefully. This will work. So uh, let's say um, I have a, 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 a HTTP uh, server which uh, is configured to use only TLS uh, v1 or v11, and I need to communicate it with uh, on uh, Relay Beta, which is not the system here, but I have installed policy from Relay Beta here. Uh, and let's say I, I use normal uh, connection to this system with OpenSSL. And you can see that uh, TLS v1 alert protocol version, but that means that um, uh, the protocol is not accepted by the client. And, um, or rather, the server says that the protocol that the client offered is not accepted by the server. Um, and then I can try TLS1, and it will work. But uh, this is somehow overriding the system configuration. Um, and but I can I can do uh, or I, I can show you also Firefox. What is that? Ah, I need to put it to the right. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, it's failed. Then, if I do, uh, I will set uh, the system-wide crypto policy to legacy um, with the update crypto policy set legacy command. Uh, then, the OpenSSL as client magically starts working, <laughs> uh, and you you can see that it used. Uh, basically the highest uh, available uh, protocol, which is TLS V11. And hopefully the Firefox will work as well. Yeah, it, it loaded the page. Yeah. So let's switch back to default because you want to be secure. <laughs> Fully secure. Well, let's say not uh, that uh, legacy policy not, doesn't make you insecure, but uh, uh, it will make it more in the end. You can be more less secure if you are connecting to the legacy side. <coughs> it doesn't mean that if you connect to side that, that uses proper uh, versions and algorithms, it will make you insecure. You will use the, the best uh, algorithms that are available. So the details. Uh, we have. Um, these crypto libraries and other uh, applications that are considered to be core. Uh, this is OpenSSL, NUTLS, NSS, and Java for the uh, crypto uh, libraries. Uh, and uh, the other applications, which basically are not using the TLS protocol, but uh, other protocols, other secure <coughs> protocols. And the Sucker Burrows 5 bind OpenSSH, which, is, which has two configurations for client and server separately and for Libras one for IPsec and Ike. These are the uh, policies that we provide. Um, the legacy is uh, 
let's say, at least 64-bit security, um, default at least 80-bit, um, next, which is uh, federal-only policy, but it's actually the default on RHEL 8 beta. Uh, uh, this, uh, in addition to the federal default, removes TLS 1011 and requires um, uh, 2K uh, diffie element uh, RSA keys, and it should be, for this reason, it should be 112 bit security. There is exception, and th that's uh, SHA 1, because SHA 1 is uh, still used in DNSSEC, and um, we cannot like completely switch it off. So, this somehow uh, breaks the rule for 112 bit security for collisions in signatures, it's only 80 bit. Um, future is a conservative level, and um, there are only 256 bits ciphers and no SHA-1. FIPS is a special policy that's uh, for use uh, by FIPS mode setup. Uh, you shouldn't like set it uh, manually. Uh, you can actually, but uh, you are on your own if you do this. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so. Summary is use default, use legacy only if you really need it, uh, use future to test compatibility of your new created or deployed application. Yeah, that's not usable for general use, but uh, uh, it's useful if you are deploying a new server, for example. Uh, it's a good idea to check if client which uses future can communicate with this new server. Um, even legacy level doesn't enable everything or make your system insecure. Uh, so, and we do things like disabling SSL v2, which is completely removed and there is no implementation anymore, and SSL v3 is disabled uh, during the build time. So even if you use legacy, you unfortunately <coughs> won't be able to communicate with SSL v3 only uh, server. And that the reason is that uh, eventual downgrade uh, can be catastrophic, and we don't want actually make the legacy policy to be like really insecure. Uh, custom levels are currently somehow somehow possible, but uh, it's very hard to like um, do them. You would have to basically uh, create the policy, install it uh, on yourself, and um, it would be. Like, uh, if we make some change, there is no fixed uh, API for, for the policies, so, uh, yeah. It, it can be that with a new version of like, uh, uh, crypto policies, it will, it will be broken, so. Uh, that's only, uh, somehow. Uh, these are the files, uh, file structure on the system. Uh, not, not that much interesting. There is something like LocalD, which allows to add some, <coughs> some additional configuration to the to the predefined backend configuration, uh, backend configurations. This is actually not that useful for custom crypto policies, but it can be used for things like uh, mentioned on the slide. Uh, currently, it's used for adding P11 Kit proxy uh, to NSS by default. What crypto policies isn't? Um, they won't make your system magically secure, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, you still need to, for example, handle system updates uh, and so on. Uh, there is no support for data at rest. Um, the reason is that the, the requirements uh, are very much different uh, than for data in transit. Um, it cannot magically configure things it doesn't know about. For example, we had this talk um, uh, about uh, Russian ghost uh, implementation and currently crypto policies don't know about it. Um, and yeah, it cannot configure, for example, if you have your uh, application that uses third party crypto library, yeah, it won't, won't follow the crypto policies. What to do in the future? We would like to uh, really uh, work on the custom crypto policies, which would uh, mean that uh, the policy would be uh, uh, some kind of policy definition file. There will be uh, you know, scripts or tools which will deploy the policy. They would update it if the 
um, like the the backend changed, uh, but um, or the or the crypto policies package changed, but uh, in a compatible way. Um, so it will like seamlessly work, hopefully. Uh, we would like to cooperate with other uh, Linux uh, OS vendors or uh, distributions. Uh, so the system-wide crypto policies are used everywhere. <laughs> and we would like uh, add support for more algorithms, of course. And we would like to add more backends, which uh, mostly, mostly, yeah, these are the, ex uh, the most critical examples, like uh, Go, Golang, and LibSSH. Maybe sometime in like more distant future, we uh, should think about the data trust support. These are the resources. Um, so what's the summary takeaway? Uh, System-wide crypto policies help with maintaining your crypto usage up to date. Help it. It doesn't mean that they solve all the problems related. Uh, they um, provide uh, some legacy compatibility. They provide you a way how to prepare for future. Uh, and uh, if something doesn't work, use this command. And otherwise, please use the default. Questions? Okay. okay. I have two questions. Uh, first one, for example, I have some legacy devices, let's say old uh, IP KVM boxes, including some old legacy stickers, like SSL V2 or SSL V3. Will I be able to set a policy to use them? Because now I'm usually using something like virtual machine with some very outdated software just to connect to them. That's the first question. That's <coughs> What? Uh, uh, policy per software. So uh, say one software using this policy and another yeah. different one. Unfortunately, no, yeah. The first question was uh, whether whether uh, uh, the legacy policy uh, will help me with uh, connecting uh, to really old legacy devices, which use, for example, SSL v2. And uh, the second question was. Um, whether uh, the policy can apply, uh, dif uh, the, whether the system will ap can apply uh, policy uh, for each uh, binary separately. Uh, so the answer to both questions is no. <laughs> the first, uh, uh, of course, and I talk about that, that uh, we, uh, some, some things are completely removed from the system for, because they are really insecure mm -hmm. uh, from, uh, and there is no implementation actually and uh, some things are disabled on build time and legacy policy cannot do anything with that. Um, and uh, for the second uh, question, uh, actually the policy uh, or for most of the backends, uh, the, uh, uh, the applications can override the policy. So they can say that, uh, yeah, we allow whatever TLS version or something. But the, the default, default configuration of these, uh, of these applications as, as they are uh, in, the, in the OS uh, should uh, like, uh, respect the policy defaults. If you override it manually in the configuration file, then you override it. Okay, thank you. Yeah? Yeah, in a sense that will um, go to override a deny. So if you deny something, the, the uh, it, it won't override it, but you can turn off something that's allowed. Yeah, yeah for NSS, the, this is uh, not possible to like enable things by this over, uh, uh, specific, uh, specific configuration. Over there. Uh, what, what other sorts of policies can you set? So, for example, I guess you can set the TLS version and maybe the Cypher suites yeah. that are used. Can you set, so for example, if I wanted to say every OpenSSL application on my system is able to trust intermediate search directly without requiring full searching. Is that possible to do? Uh, no. Uh, so it, the question is what, what can be configured by the policy? Currently, uh, it allows you to configure the ciphers, uh, the key lengths, and the protocol versions, basically. That's it. Uh, I have some questions. Uh, first of all, yeah, do I correctly understand 
that if algorithm is uh, totally unknown by the policy, it's uh, just rejected. Yeah. Uh, the question is whether uh, when the policy, uh, when the algorithm uh, is unknown to the policy, it's rejected. Yeah, the, the, uh, the current configurations as they are basically disable unknown algorithms. Okay. Uh, the second question is uh, what's the opinion uh, of, uh, for example, the OpenSSL team about uh, the change you propose? So what uh, does OpenSSL team uh, about introducing something uh, similar in the OpenSSL itself? Um, the question was whether, whether OpenSSL upstream team uh, considers uh, including something by themselves, like similar. Um, I don't know. Y you didn't discuss it or what? Well, basically, um, I discussed it when I um, uh, submitted the pull request that uh, allows uh, loading the, or makes the OpenSSL loading the configuration file by default. Uh, there was some discussions, some small discussion, but I feel it like uh, for them it's like, this is not, not um, basically you, uh, what, what they have now allows you, if you use OpenSSL in isolation, you, it basically allows you to do this configuration. So, but it's not, um, I don't, I don't really... It's not system-wide yeah. solution. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's not system-wide. Mm -hmm. Yeah? A uh, related question. How can they make this implemented? <coughs> I've been creating open system file, uh, based on your policy, or just to modify the system itself, and uh, basically you can just modify the system itself, so you apply application, know nothing about your policy management, but you use this open system itself. Uh, how your policy is affected? Uh, the, the, for OpenSSL, the configuration file is loaded uh, by the, by the uh, library by default. You can, I think you can override it so it won't load it. But uh, your policy is generating this file, right? Um, no, the, 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 um, the update crypto policy tool basically uh, updates the configuration file. Uh, it's, it's somehow uh, a little bit different, but uh, the configuration file loads the policy. It, it includes the, the configuration file snippet that uh, has the policy configuration. Okay. And if you disable loading the default poly, uh, con configuration file, then uh, you won't get uh, this applied. Yeah. Uh, I'm not able to get the list of We can add it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, Do I have to remember or save your presentation? Uh, there is uh, there is <coughs> one page and it lists. Uh, I was like skipping quickly through that. Maybe I should not. Manual page uh, uh, of the tool, uh, but uh, there is a new manual page that will be in the next uh, upstream release that uh, uh, lists uh, all the policies in the detail the supported policy. And of course, uh, with the interaction of custom crypto policies, we will have to provide something like list, listing all the <coughs> custom policies on the system and, and so on. So, but this is not yet important. Is it possible to get some verbose mode so the tool tells me what is actually dust my system and which configuration changes and which algorithms are called? The question was whether there could be some verbose mode which uh, will like uh, show uh, uh, show the um, uh, what what the actual policy applied is and so on. Uh, currently, no, yeah. Thank thank you for the suggestion for improvement. <laughs> okay, we are out of time. So.